Well, good evening, everyone. Um, I, I do want to just point out um, there are some folks that are not able to hear. I, I believe that's coming through the message. So I just wanted to uh, point that out to you, Melanie um, and team. But again, grateful for uh, you, your work, uh, everyone's work from behind the scenes. Good evening. It's good to be with you all. Thank you for allowing me to be in your homes tonight as we continue on our uh, teaching series over uh, this beautiful word, hope, and looking at hope, how it, uh, we're also looking at uh, these uh, disciplines that we use in our, in our practice, right? Such as we talked last week about worship, and uh, we're going to be looking over the next couple of weeks uh, what, you know, what does service look like and how it generates hope? What does giving look like and how it generates hope? But tonight, uh, my hope is, is that we can look at uh, turning, into, turning to scripture and seeing how that generates hope as well. But first, I want to open us up in prayer, so will you join me? God, again, we give thanks to you, for you are good, Lord. You are faithful. And uh, Lord, again, we are uh, reminded of your faithfulness in these times, and able. Uh, we are grateful that we're able to connect like this, uh, even though uh, not in the flesh, as we would say, but digitally. And so bless our evening, uh, bless our time together, and may the words of my mouth and be the meditate and the meditations of, of my heart be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. We pray all of this in your holy and mighty name. Amen. So I was uh, was able to connect with a good friend of mine back home in Oklahoma uh, this past week. And we were just uh, shooting the breeze, talking about a lot of things, about our work, uh, about our families. And uh, the question arose is, what is one thing that, uh, that we miss doing? Uh, you know, getting, you know, since we're in quarantine, what is one thing that we're missing right now? And you know, I had to be honest. I said, you know, uh, I can name off a lot of things, but the, the one thing that I do miss is, is going to a good movie. Uh, that was really uh, my time to, to get away, not only from, from thinking about uh, ministry and work, but just to disconnect from the world. And why you say about movies? Well, I, I love a good movie. Uh, I love action. I love sci-fi. Uh, I'm a big Star Wars fan, big Endgame Avengers fan as well. But at the same time, though, I, I love a good movie. Uh, in this case, that, that gives an inspiring message of hope. Uh, I remember one of my favorite movies of all time, and many of you probably have seen this, uh, The Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it's an older movie. It came out over 20 years ago, but uh, it's a story about Andy Dufresne, who was uh, accused of murder, uh, and he didn't he didn't do it. Obviously, uh, uh, not to give away too many spoilers, if, if if some of you haven't seen it yet. But uh, surely some of us have seen the movie where uh, you know he meets this. Uh, they become friends and his name is Red and there I remember this particular scene and I wanted to show it to you tonight but I couldn't because of copyright issues but there's this scene as they're in prison and Andy has just gotten really out of uh, he, he's been punished and he's uh, been in lockdown and he gets out of it and uh, him and Red are having this conversation and uh, you know Andy Dufresne pretty much says that you know what kept, you know, as he was in the hole, what kept him going was, you know, the music of Mozart and uh, just thinking back on the things that he held on to that, that really helped him get through uh, that dark period of, uh, of time. And uh, it's, he goes on to expand on that to say that it's, it's really hope that really continues to carry him on day after day after day while he's in prison. Now, it's funny because as he's having this dialogue and this conversation with Red, Red seems to get defensive with that, right? And says, you know, hope will ultimately drive a man crazy. But as you know, the story uh, unfolds where Andy Dufresne escapes from prison and eventually then they all, they, they meet up and, and they have this remarkable friendship, but there's a great quote in the movie says, you know, hope is the best of things and, and no good thing ever dies. And so that really stuck with me, right? Uh, because uh, that's that's really what uh, you know encourages me as we continue to move forward uh, daily. Uh, as Christians, uh, we are called to be uh, hopeful people, right? Uh, we just got done with Easter, like I said last week, and and so the Christian hope is a confident expectation, right, of what God is not only doing with us, not only is doing within our lives, but is continuing to do into uh, tomorrow and into the future, right? Hope for the Christian is an unwavering commitment to trust God's promises are real and that God's promises are worth 
as shaping our lives and continuing to push through. So, uh, you know, as, as we talk about that, um, you know, giving the challenges that we're experiencing and facing, and I go to movies when I feel down, what is one thing that you do when you're kind of discouraged? What is one thing that you turn to uh, when you're feeling down and out, right? Last week we talked about, you know, uh, as you continue to worship God and experience God, are you going outside and, and doing that, right? Are you, are you exercising? Uh, or do you turn to scripture? And that's one of the things I wanna talk about uh, with you all tonight is as turning to scripture, encouraging you to turn to scripture. So when I'm down and out, uh, you know, I, I, I usually try to wrestle, okay, what are my emotions? What, what am I thinking right now? Am I tired? Am I, am I, am I feeling discouraged? Am I, am I feeling fearful? Because every, there's lots of scriptures that can connect with those themes that, that all of us are feeling, right? And one scripture that I want to share with you tonight comes out of Revelation chapter 22. And if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn there with me, Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. And as I told you about movies, uh, I'm a big fan of movies. And uh, the other movie I remember last year, uh, we were getting ready for the summer and this new Avengers film was coming out and I was going to take my daughter to go see it. And I remember uh, another friend of mine, a colleague of mine here at work, uh, told me uh, and he went to go see it the night before and he had spoiled the movie for me. I was very upset with him. Uh, I didn't talk to him for a couple of days. I was so mad. But I say that because we have a spoiler here in our scripture. And what I mean by that is that John of Patmos is giving us this revelation of what to expect of what to come, right? Uh, revelation has been known as that final book in the Bible. Uh, it has been known as apocalyptic literature, meaning that it's the end times. And usually revelation has put somewhat fear into people, right? We don't wanna go there because necessarily we don't wanna talk about the end times. But I wanna encourage you that revelation is more of a gospel story, just like any other story in the Bible, right? It is a story full of encouragement. It is a story full of hope. What John is giving us is, is the ending, yes, but at the same time, though, a hopeful ending. And as you see here in verses one through five, he writes, then the angel showed me the river of life-giving water, shining like crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the land to the middle of the city's main street. On each side of the river is the tree of life, which produces 12 crops of fruit, bearing its fruit each month. The tree leaves are for the healing of the nations. There will be no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. Night will be no more. They won't need the light of lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will shine on them. They will rule forever and always. And as you continue to read that chapter, the, the author continues to give us more words of hope where Jesus then begins to speak, begins, begins to speak to creation, begins to speak to us saying that I will wipe away every tear from their eyes, that death will be no more. And as you're meditating on those words and as you're thinking on those words, again, how is that giving you hope? How is that encouraging you? How is that inspiring? How, does that, how is that inspiring you to move on, uh, not only from this day, but also to tomorrow? As you're doing that, you find yourself doing a practice called Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina is a Latin word for divine reading, where you are reading one verse at a time, you're reading a particular passage at a time, and you are allowing that to soak in with you and your soul. And you're asking, okay, God, what are you speaking? What, how are you speaking to me through these verses? How, what, are you, what are you wanting me to do? So again, I want to encourage you as you continue to uh, immerse yourself into this word of hope, getting into scripture, uh, finding yourself, uh, seeing where God is speaking to you. How is God speaking to you in this good news of revelation? Uh, I wanted to share with you a story. This past weekend, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, officiate a, a wedding and it was for a young couple. This young couple uh, understood that they had some limits to their wedding. They, had, they wanted to honor their date. Uh, they didn't want they didn't think about moving it but they also understood that they were only allowed eight people uh, the other two people were myself and our uh, sound person so again there we are our, there we are in the wesley chapel very small wedding we were able to simulcast it for their immediate family and other guests uh, but it was a service full of love it was a service full of hope and usually after each wedding uh, we take them into the back of the wesley chapel so they can start signing away their marriage license 
And as I was with them, I was told that uh, they had all their guests and all their immediate family out here in the parking lot, ready to surprise them. So as they finished writing their, their uh, assigning their uh, marriage license, I said, hey, listen, you, you have a large group outside uh, waiting for you. And they were, they were kind of surprised. They were like, what do you mean? Uh, I said, well, you, all of your family and friends were out there. And so we uh, ushered them out into uh, the front doors of the Wesley Chapel. And there was everyone with signs honking their horns. And they were just in tears, right? And they go out there in the parking lot and they're not hugging anyone, but they're just waving at everyone. And Susan Bell, who was our wedding coordinator, just started crying. I told myself, okay, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Next thing you know, I'm crying, right? Because in that moment, right, in the midst of uh, challenging times, right, love continued to find a way. Joy continued to find a way. Faith continued to find a way. And they uh, had one of the best days they ever they ever had, they said, uh, joining their union together, but also still able to connect with their family and friends. You know, what, that's what I think of when I think of these scriptures. That's what I think of when I think of God's faithfulness and hope. So, as we're heading into uh, tomorrow, as we're heading into a new month here pretty soon, uh, we don't know what the future holds for us, right? But we are hopeful, knowing that God is at work, knowing that God is in the midst of all this, and that God is really shaping us and molding us uh, into the people that he has called us to be. So if you find yourself getting discouraged, if you find yourself getting uh, to a place where you're, you're feeling hopeless, I want to encourage you this week uh, to turn to Scripture. And, and find that particular verse, find that particular passage that gives you life. And take your time with it. Um, allow it to, to, to wrestle with your soul. And as you're meditating on it, and as you're marinating on it, as I like to say, um, ask yourself the questions. Okay, um, what is it that I'm getting out of this? What is God speaking? How is God speaking to me through this prophetic word? And more, what is God wanting me to do uh, through reading this prophetic word? So, we're going to end tonight with you in small groups. Uh, again, I, I just feel uh, really honored and inspired to be with you all uh, weekly. Um, we got three more weeks of diving into hope. I hope you join me next week. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, how we are continuing to serve in the midst of this pandemic, but also generating hope. And I'm going to have a guest with me who is doing some remarkable work that has not only encouraged our staff here, but my hope is that he will encourage all of us next Wednesday night. So that being said, uh, I'm going to hand it over to Melanie, uh, but thank you again. God bless.